Titanium is the ninth most abundant element in the Earth's crust and finds use in a variety of applications. Its most known role is probably to alloy it with other elements in order to create a very strong metal that is also extremely lightweight. Titanium's use in aerospace engineering and top-of-the-line sports car construction is a testament to its high strength-to-weight ratio and corrosion resistance. But another form of titanium that has far more uses and doesn't get half the credit is titanium dioxide. Although titanium is recognized more for its use as a metal, it is extracted primarily to meet the demands for titanium dioxide. In fact, 93% of all titanium extracted worldwide is refined into titanium dioxide. This form of the element is created through a chemical process that we'll get into later and is mainly used as a colorant due to the fact that in powder form it is the whitest and brightest of all known pigments. Titanium dioxide is also extremely reflective and it scatters and absorbs ultraviolet light, making it a key ingredient in sunscreens. But there are many more applications for this versatile commodity, which has been relied on for a century, and it presents some very compelling use cases that positively affect our environment. It's time to shine a light on this underappreciated but incredibly important resource. It's titanium on commodity culture. This documentary is brought to you by Temis Resources, focused on advanced iron, titanium, vanadium projects in Quebec. Denoted by the chemical formula TiO2, titanium dioxide takes center stage in various industrial applications. When harnessed as a pigment, it is also known as titanium white, or pigment white 6, and was first produced commercially as a colorant in 1916. Titanium dioxide is a white solid that is insoluble in water. Its natural brightness renders it indispensable across a spectrum of applications, from vibrant strokes of paint to the protective embrace of sunscreen and even the tantalizing allure of food coloring. It also finds use in paper, ceramics, rubber, textiles, inks, toothpaste, and a variety of cosmetics. It's been estimated that titanium dioxide is involved in two-thirds of all pigments worldwide and is trusted for being non-toxic, with an unblemished safety record. One of titanium dioxide's most impactful applications is in the pharmaceutical industry, where it is used as an essential ingredient in protective coating to preserve medicinal efficacy and to ensure that medicines retain their color uniformity over time making it easier to differentiate both the type of medicine and the dosage size. In addition, titanium dioxide's inert and unreactive characteristics ensure that it never interferes with the active ingredients in the medication. Titanium is biocompatible and resistant to bacteria and corrosion, meaning it is completely safe inside the human body, which is what allows it to be used in pharmaceuticals and food products and perhaps most notably in a wide variety of medical devices. This includes shoulder, elbow, hip, and knee replacements, pacemakers, dental implants, and more. In fact, medical grade titanium is so compatible with the human body that muscle tissue can attach and grow around titanium implants without causing any issues. Titanium dioxide can also be added to the surface of cements and tiles to bestow sterilizing, deodorizing, and anti-fouling properties due to its photocatalytic capabilities. When exposed to water, titanium dioxide forms hydroxyl-free radicals, which can convert organic molecules to CO2 and water and neutralize otherwise harmful microorganisms. Incredibly, Titanium dioxide is also a key component in the coating that allows for the construction of self-cleaning glass. The process by which this occurs is very complex, but ultimately, the titanium dioxide on the surface of the glass becomes activated by UV light, causing it to generate hydroxyl radicals which break down organic molecules. When it rains, water runs off the glass and any dirt present is washed away. Self-cleaning glass windows reduce electricity consumption 
by reflecting more of the sun's rays and cutting air conditioning costs. As if all of this weren't impressive enough, the real cape worn by this superhero of a commodity is its power to protect the environment in a variety of ways. When employed as a coating in exterior paints for structures situated in warm and tropical climates, the inherent white and light reflecting qualities of titanium dioxide contribute significantly to energy conservation as it diminishes reliance on air conditioning. Furthermore, owing to its opaqueness, it doesn't need to be applied in thick or double coats, enhancing resource efficiency and minimizing waste. Titanium coatings in special paints for buildings also cut down on maintenance costs by providing additional protection from the weathering effects of sunlight, wind, and rain. Titanium dioxide also proves indispensable as a denox catalyst in exhaust gas systems for cars, trucks, and even power plants, thereby mitigating their environmental footprint. In the realm of renewable energy, Gratzel solar cells, a specific type of solar power cell harnessing the power of nano-titanium dioxide, mirrors the process of photosynthesis in plants, contributing to sustainable energy solutions. Titanium dioxide is also being experimented with in new electronic battery technology, and has been shown to recharge faster and hold charges longer than conventional batteries. Tesla has used titanium sheets on the underbodies of their vehicles since 2019 to protect the lithium ion batteries inside from igniting. This trend could certainly spread to other EV manufacturers as well, providing an additional catalyst for titanium demand. Titanium dioxide paints have started to be employed in the wind energy sector. Strong winds, salt water, and other harsh environmental conditions can cause issues for steel-built wind turbines, and so a coating reinforced with titanium dioxide helps to protect performance due to its photocatalytic properties and ability to scatter light, reducing UV degradation. Now that we have a grasp on the massive variety of applications for titanium dioxide, Let's take a look at how it is extracted from the earth and processed. Titanium is the fourth most common structural metal on the planet, after aluminum, iron, and magnesium. Economically viable deposits of titanium are spread around the world, notably in Canada, Australia, the United States, South Africa, Sierra Leone, Ukraine, and many others. It should be noted that while titanium is the ninth most common element in the Earth's crust, it is rarely found in pure form and must be sourced from certain minerals. The main minerals that are mined to extract titanium are rutile, which is approximately 95% titanium dioxide, and ilmenite, containing 50 to 65% titanium dioxide. Titanium minerals occur in both alluvial formations formed by the accumulation and deposition of sediment carried by rivers, streams, or other flowing water, and in intrusive igneous rock via the accumulation of crystal layers at the base of magma chambers that form over millions of years. Rutile and ilmenite deposits are generally mined by the open pit method. Open pit mining begins with a detailed geological analysis to identify optimal locations for titanium extraction. Drill rigs then bore precise holes into the titanium bearing rock, and explosives are carefully loaded into the bore holes. With stringent safety measures in place, the explosives are detonated, triggering a controlled blast that fractures the rock, dislodging vast quantities of ore and breaking the rock down into rubble. After the dust settles, workers move in to clear away the debris and load the blasted ore into trucks. The ore is then transported to a processing facility for refinement into titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide is produced using one of two methods, sulfite or chloride. In the chloride process, accounting for 40-45% to 45 of global production, ore is treated with chlorine and carbon to produce titanium tetrachloride, a volatile liquid. This liquid is then purified through distillation. Treating titanium tetrachloride with oxygen regenerates chlorine and yields titanium dioxide. 
For the sulfate process, ilmenite undergoes treatment with sulfuric acid to extract ferrous sulfate. The resulting synthetic rutile is further processed based on the end user's specifications, such as pigment grade. The chemistry of these two processes is far more advanced than we have time to adequately explain here, but a link is in the description to more detailed explanations for those who want to dive deeper. The final result of all this work is the unmatched luminescence of titanium dioxide, and it is ready for commercial use. Fascinating to be sure. But even more intriguing is the discovery of titanium and how it came to be used to construct a top-secret reconnaissance plane for the CIA that reached speeds unmatched to this very day. The history of titanium dates back to 1790, when the English clergyman and chemist William Gregor found himself grappling with an enigma. Amidst the black sands of Cornwall, Gregor encountered a perplexing white oxide that eluded identification. This substance, unbeknownst to him at the time, would come to be recognized as titanium. Fast forward to 1795, and a pioneering Prussian chemist named Martin Klaproth made a breakthrough when he successfully extracted titanium from the mineral rutile. Named after the titans of Hellenic mythology, this pivotal moment marked the official entry of titanium into the realm of known elements, a testament to the collaborative endeavors and tenacity of early chemists in unraveling the secrets of the natural world. Interestingly, Klaproth also discovered uranium and zirconium, making him an important figure in the history of the periodic table. Jumping more dramatically in time to the late 1950s, let's explore how titanium allowed for the creation of one of the most advanced and fastest planes known to humanity. American aerospace company Lockheed was tasked by the CIA to develop a high-speed, high-altitude reconnaissance aircraft. To meet unprecedented performance demands, including a blistering speed of Mach 3 and the ability to fly at an altitude of 90,000 feet, Lockheed opted for titanium alloy over aluminum in a bid to cut the plane's weight significantly while maintaining an adequate degree of strength in its body. And the A-12 was born, though not without some initial difficulties. Titanium's extensive use in the A-12 marked a departure from its prior limited application in aircraft. However, working with titanium posed numerous challenges. Initial production hurdles, such as difficulties in shaping and welding, were compounded by titanium's incompatibility with certain chemicals. Overcoming these obstacles required innovative solutions and extensive trial and error. Lockheed's perseverance eventually paid off with improvements in machining techniques and the establishment of a specialized workforce dedicated to titanium fabrication. The A-12 program served as a catalyst for the development of an entire industrial infrastructure around titanium processing. The knowledge gained from constructing the A-12 proved essential when Lockheed was tasked with the seemingly impossible by the Eisenhower administration a few years later in 1961. Build an aircraft that could fly faster than any plane in existence at greater altitudes and with a minimal radar cross-section. The challenge of creating a radically advanced aircraft pushed head designer Clarence Kelly Johnson and his team to their limits. They committed to building a prototype within just 20 months aiming for sustained speeds exceeding 2,000 miles per hour, a quandary which posed unique engineering hurdles due to the extreme atmospheric heat this would entail. To withstand such conditions, they turned once again to titanium alloy, as the only metal that would be light enough to achieve such incredible speeds and durable enough to withstand the sweltering temperatures. The aircraft's corrugated heat-resistant skin coupled with its innovative design, rose to the occasion, and the SR-71, also known as Blackbird, was ready to deploy. This pioneering blend of stealth technology and titanium engineering marked a significant leap forward in aviation design. 
Titanium dioxide was first discovered in 1821, but it took until 1916 for the technology capable of mass producing it to come about. That year, the Titanium Pigment Corporation of Niagara Falls, New York, and the Titan Company of Norway simultaneously began producing this new white pigment commercially. Up until that point, the main white pigments used in paints were white lead, zinc white, and lithopone. Titanium dioxide changed the game, and its use eventually evolved into all the applications we mentioned in the first segment of this documentary. We've now got a handle on the past of titanium and titanium dioxide, so let us now delve into the future and discover what it holds for this essential resource. As the global economy continues to evolve, demand for titanium dioxide will be driven by construction activity, an increasing desire for lightweight and durable coatings in the automotive sector, and rising demand for consumer cosmetics in developing economies. In addition, its application in solar power cells should see increased use as more governments worldwide move forward with green energy initiatives. When it comes to titanium's main use as a pigment, that isn't set to slow down anytime either. According to a report from October 2023 from private consulting firm Maya Research, of the roughly 9.5 million tons of global titanium feedstock consumption, the majority is used by the pigment industry, and the market for high-grade titanium feedstock consumes approximately 2.8 million tons annually, with strong demand being driven by the pigment industry. Over the past 50 years, the search for major rutile deposits has yielded no significant discoveries. Compounding this, two prominent Western mines are slated to conclude production in the next few years, with no substantial projects anticipated in the near future. This confluence of factors has led market analysts to predict constrained supplies and an upward trajectory in titanium dioxide prices up ahead. In response to these dynamics, there is a discernible shift within the titanium industry towards processing unconventional sources of feedstock, which often involve higher economic and time costs. It should be noted that ilmenite deposits are far and above the most common source of titanium dioxide, currently accounting for approximately 95% of global production. Ilmenite can also be processed into synthetic rutile through pyro or hydro metallurgical techniques, providing an effective alternative that is more economical to produce as rutile deposits become scarcer. From providing us with the most vivid colors imaginable, to protecting life-saving medications and powering the planet with solar technology, titanium dioxide will remain a vital commodity to the ascension of humanity in the years ahead. <laughs>